Tesla Powerwall 2 Canadian Solar EPQ Battery. Which is the better energy storage system for your home? We're going to be answering that question and telling you all about these two leading battery products in today's video. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 10 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find expert reviews on solar panels, batteries, inverters, pretty much any equipment or technology that makes up a home renewable energy system. Uh, we do new product announcements as well as head-to-head -head product comparisons like today's video here where we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the market-leading Tesla Powerwall 2 and the brand new Canadian Solar EP Cube energy storage system. Now, we're going to be doing the evaluation in five categories. Each category has a maximum score of five points for a maximum total score of 25 points. Now, those categories are power, including both continuous running power and peak surge power, the capacity of the battery product, uh, of course the warranty on the battery, the cost to have the battery system installed, and then finally what I like to call the X Factor. And what the X Factor is is a way that I can award additional points for one of the two products where there may not be a direct apples to apples comparison, but where those differences could have a big impact for you as a potential system owner. And with that, let's get into the comparison. All right, first up is the Tesla Powerwall 2. Now in terms of power rating, each Tesla Powerwall 2 can support a continuous load of 7.6 kilowatts with surge power up to 10 kilowatts. Uh, now that is on the high end of the spectrum for a single battery backup system. Uh, other batteries that we see in the same category, some of them only do three to four kilowatts, others do five kilowatts, but the Tesla Powerwall can sustain a continuous load of 7.6 kilowatts on a single battery alone. That is enough to back up virtually all of the 120 volt loads within your home on a single battery. Now in terms of battery capacity, each Tesla Powerwall provides 13 and a half kilowatt hours of energy storage. Uh, again, this is on the larger end of the spectrum. Most home batteries in this class only provide 10 kilowatt hours of storage. So Tesla here at 13 and a half kilowatt hours is basically 30 35% more storage capacity than your typical home battery. Uh, and of course, when you're talking about storage capacity, it means it allows you to run your loads longer before the battery has to be recharged. Now, in terms of the warranty, the Tesla Powerwall comes with a 10-year unlimited warranty, uh, and the battery is guaranteed to provide at least 70% of the initial rated storage capacity out at year 10, which is the last year of the warranty. Uh, in terms of cost, I would say Tesla Powerwall is middle of the road in terms of cost. Uh, of course, it's going to depend on which state you live in and who your installer is. So I know a lot of folks, they want to know, well, Joe, tell me what's the price? What's exactly the price? Well, it's, it's different. And I know that many of you are going to be watching this video from all across the United States and many of you from other countries as well. So I can't give you a firm fixed price, but what I can tell you is that the Tesla Powerwall two years ago used to be what I considered a, a very cost competitive battery. Now I would say it's, it's more middle of the road in terms of pricing. And then in terms of X Factor, I'm gonna award the Tesla Powerwall plus two X Factor points because of some of the aesthetic features. I, I have, I've got to say the Tesla Powerwall I think is still the best looking battery just in terms of the physical aesthetics. Uh, it also is a more compact battery due to it using the older lithium iron, uh, lithium ion chemistry. Uh, the other thing that a lot of Tesla owners appreciate is the integrated Tesla app. And so especially if you already have a Tesla electric vehicle and you like being able to track your vehicle, your vehicle charging, your solar, your battery, everything on one app, uh, I get a lot of positive feedback about the Tesla app. So this is the current market leading Tesla Powerwall 2. All right, next up is the new Canadian Solar EP Cube battery system. Now, the EP Cube battery system consists of the two components that you see here, 
the EP cube gateway, which is going to act as your whole house transfer switch, full 200 amp pass through transfer switch, uh, as well as the EP cube hybrid inverter and battery system. Now, I should mention right off the bat that this is a true hybrid inverter and battery system, meaning that this is really all you need to do your DC AC conversion for the entire solar power system. So if you're starting for, with a brand new solar installation, you don't have to have a separate inverter to do the grid tie function. The EP cube hybrid can do both the grid tie function and the battery backup function in one piece of equipment. Um, the other thing you're going to notice is it is one integrated appliance. So you have your inverter module at the top and then you can have multiple battery storage modules depending on how much storage capacity you need. But once it's installed, it appears to be one continuous or one integrated appliance. Now, in terms of power handling capacity, each EP cube hybrid can support a continuous load of 7.6 kilowatts with surge power up to 11.4 kilowatts. Uh, so in terms of surge power, definitely an advantage here for the EPQ battery. With 11.4 kilowatts surge power, that's gonna be enough to start a small to medium size air conditioning unit, even when you're running on backup power with a single battery stack. Now in terms of storage capacity, you're looking at anywhere between 10 kilowatt hours with only three battery modules, up to 20 kilowatt hours if you install all six battery modules on the battery stack. And so six would be the most you can do uh, on a single stack. Now, of course, you can stack multiple hybrid inverters together to increase both your power output and your storage capacity. And of course, with the Tesla Powerwall and most AC coupled batteries, you can do the same thing as well. The more units you add, you increase your power and your storage capacity. But for a single unit with the EP Cube, you can actually get up to 20 kilowatt hour storage on a single hybrid. Now, in terms of the warranty, EP Cube also comes with a 10 year warranty. Uh, and that's what we're seeing a lot of the leading battery brands are offering that same 10 year warranty. However, EP Cube offers a guarantee of at least 80% of initial storage capacity compared to Tesla's 70% of initial capacity when you reach the 10th year of the warranty. And I think a lot of that actually has to do with EP Cube is, using, is, is using the newer, safer, more durable lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And that's why it's able to hold its charge capacity over a longer period of time. Even if you're maybe you're in California where you want to take advantage of the battery for time of use and peak rate avoidance, even if you're using the battery every day with the lithium iron phosphate chemistry, it's going to hold up to more cycles and it's going to hold more of its capacity over time. Now in terms of cost, I think you're going to find that the EP Cube and the Tesla Powerwall are pretty much heads up in terms of cost. Uh, again, of course, this is going to vary based on where you live and who your installer is. But what I've seen so far is that although the EP Cube may be slightly more expensive in terms of the initial equipment, you're going to experience significant savings on the labor and the installation side because of the simplified wiring. Now, I should mention here, EP Cube is an AC or DC coupled system, meaning that if you're doing a brand new installation, you can bring DC power from your solar panels directly to the hybrid unit here. You don't have to have a separate third party inverter like Enphase or Solar Edge. The EP Cube hybrid can handle the power conditioning for the entire system. Uh, but it is an also an AC coupled system, which means that if you're using this to retrofit battery backup onto an existing solar system, you can take the output of whatever inverter system you currently have, whether it's Enphase, Solar Edge, SMA, Fronius, or really any, any listed grid tie inverter, you can take the AC output from that existing system, feed that to one of the AC inputs here on EP Cube, and just use the EP Cube for storage and backup. So it does give you a little bit more flexibility. But if you're doing a brand new install with DC coupled only, I think you're gonna find the installation time and cost is lower with the EP Cube solution. And then finally, in terms of X Factor, I'm gonna award the EP Cube battery plus four X Factor points for a few of the features that I just mentioned. Um, first is the AC and DC coupling capability. Gives you a lot of options in terms of new installs and or retrofits. Um, also, it gives you the option to integrate a generator power source with the system. 
So inside your EPCube gateway here, you actually have two 100 amp smart controlled circuits. Uh, and these circuits actually are bi-directional. So not only can you use them for load control, that, that's a very common feature, is wanting to control the consumption of the heaviest loads within your house, like air conditioning, for example. Uh, or maybe if you have an EV charger in your home, you don't necessarily want to run those appliances when you're running on battery backup power. But having those bi-directional smart circuit controls means you can actually take AC power in. Uh, as we've already discussed, you could take AC power in from an existing grid tie solar system, um, or you could take AC power in from an AC fuel burning generator. Uh, and that's one of the things that I always recommend if you're preparing to survive a long-term power outage um, or a totally off-grid operation, I always recommend having that generator backup capability. So even if you hit a patch of bad weather where, where the solar panels are not keeping up with recharging the battery, all you have to do is fire up the generator, let the generator run for a few hours and bring the batteries back full, and then you can go back to running off battery power. And then finally, as I also touched on, is the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Now, the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is not susceptible to thermal runaway like the older lithium ion chemistries. Uh, and as of this recording, the Tesla Powerwall 2 is still using the old lithium ion or the lithium NMC chemistry, which theoretically could be subject to thermal runaway. Now, I can tell you that I have not had any personal experience with any of my Tesla Powerwall clients having the battery overheat and catch on fire, um, but it, it has happened. In, in a few very rare cases, it has happened, uh, and it is a feature or, or I would say a byproduct of the lithium NMC chemistry. Uh, you don't have that issue with the lithium iron phosphate. So it is safer, it runs cooler, and is considered much safer for indoor use inside your home. Um, again, it is also a more durable chemistry as well. And so as you consider maybe having this battery installed on your home and using it for the next 10, 15, or even more years, the lithium iron phosphate chemistry will hold up more to more cycles over a longer period of time. And so for those reasons, plus four X factor points for the EP cube. So if we summarize it here, in terms of power, we're looking at 7.6 kilowatts continuous with 10 kilowatt surge for the power wall with 13 and a half kilowatt hour storage, 10 years warranty and middle of the road in terms of cost, plus two X factor points for the aesthetic design and the integrated Tesla app. For the EPQ battery, we're looking at also 7.6 kilowatts continuous load, but up to 11.4 peak surge power. So advantage to EPQ here, EP Cube allows you to install between 10 and 20 kilowatt hour storage per hybrid unit. So more total storage capacity per unit. Both units have a 10 year warranty, although EP Cube guarantees 10% more capacity at year 10. Similar in terms of middle of the road, in terms of cost, plus four X factor points for the AC and DC coupling, the bi-directional hookup with the generator support and the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. So if we total it up, I'm giving the Tesla Powerwall four out of five for power, four out of five for capacity, four out of five for warranty, three out of five for cost, it is pretty much middle of the road in terms of cost, plus two X factor points for a total of 17 points. For the Canadian Solar EP Cube, I'm also awarding four out of five for power, five out of five for capacity. You can go significantly higher capacity per unit. Four out of five for warranty, three out of five for cost, plus four X factor points for the bi-directional, the uh, generator support and the lithium iron phosphate for a total of 20 points. So if I had to compare, if I had to pick between one of these products just on paper, I will have to give the advantage to the EPQ battery. Um, however, folks, like with most of these comparisons, it really depends on what your situation is. Uh, and I know that Tesla has a very loyal following, so those of you that already have Tesla vehicles and the Tesla app may choose to just go ahead and use the Tesla battery for your home energy storage system as well. Um, also, we've been hearing rumors now that the Tesla Powerwall 3 release is imminent. So it'll be interesting to see whether Tesla has changed some of their specifications to keep pace with new entrants like the EP Cube 
that are giving them more of a challenge in the marketplace. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for this comparison. As always, if you're getting good value from the information that we publish on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button uh, and also hit that subscribe button as well. That way, as we have new videos that publish out, it'll come up on your feed or you can get a notification so you can stay up to date with us. Uh, of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of evaluating different solar and storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote or if you just need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right price or getting the right equipment, uh, as always, you can reach out to us on the link below, set up a quick call with one of our experts here, and we'd be happy to provide some pricing and some information for you. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video presentation about the exciting new Canadian Solar EP Cube battery backup system. If you're a solar installer and you're interested in carrying the EPQ battery, we have an exclusive opportunity available through Canadian Solar and Solar Surge. In fact, by signing up, if you meet the qualifications for a qualified installer, you can receive one free battery module, again, just for signing up for the installer training, and then you'll have an opportunity to receive up to four more free battery modules as you perform installation. So you can get a second free module with your first installation, another module with your second and your third installation, and then a fifth free battery module once you cross 100 kilowatt hours of installed capacity. So if you'd like to sign up for the installer training, uh, you can visit the link below, which is epcube.solarsurge.net. Just answer a few basic questions and provide your contact information so that we can get you set up for the installer training program. Uh, again, to receive up to five free battery modules, make sure you register at epcube.solarsurge.net so that you can get started with the training program right away. <laughs>